everyone. Are you getting a new puppy soon? I'm going to divide this into what I think are essential right away and then the fun stuff. So let's get started with the essentials. First of all, a crate. Now you can use the solid crate as I have here, or you can use a wire crate like you see with Snoop. He has a wire crate. The owner has put a puppy pen around it. Now Snoop's crate in the beginning had a divider in it. Dividers are so important to keep the puppy from sleeping in too big a space. They're going to pee on one side and sleep on the other. Dividers are fine. Now Snoop's crate does not have a divider in because he can have the whole crate. Wire crate, solid crate. That would be number one. Second, you need a puppy pen. So your puppy does not have to stay in the crate all the time. You need a puppy pen. This is a wire pen. This is 36 inches. You can see the uh, puppy pen that Snoop is in is probably about 30 inches tall, which is fine for him. You have a taller puppy, you might need the taller pen. But, and I will uh, put the links to everything below. I always buy a cup holder. In that cup holder, put a little water bowl. Then you can hook it down low where your puppy can reach it right on the side of the puppy pen. So your puppy always has water when they're in the pen. Wire pen, or if you don't want a wire pen, if you think that's too scratchy or a problem, then there is a PVC pen. This is a Rover Pet puppy pen, PVC pipe, snaps together. You can see the video of the puppy in the Rover Pet puppy pen. Third on my list are gates. You can put one at every doorway. Keep your puppy in a safe, secure area. Helps a lot with the potty training. This is a Carlson gate, but it can be any brand. I'll put the link below. Swings open. Easy to install. If you need to keep your puppy away from an older dog because the older dog needs time to adjust to the puppy, gates are fine. If you want your kids to play in the playroom and your puppy not to be with them because you can't supervise, gates are great. Gate at every doorway until your puppy is potty trained. You have your crate, you have your puppy pen, and you have your gates. Now, I never have enough blankets. I love this one. It's got all dogs on it. It's so soft. If I was going to pick up my puppy and drive home with my puppy, I'd probably have my puppy sit on this blanket. When I get home, I love little donut beds. Something that the puppy can curl up in. Make sure that you have crate mats that go into the crate and they're washable. Just throw them in the washing machine, throw them in the dryer, and they're good to go because you know you might have accidents. When I go into my office, I like this bed because I can put this bed near my chair and my puppy can curl up in it. But I don't want my puppy wandering around the room. So the next important thing is to make sure that my puppy is wearing a harness. Just a small little harness because my puppy is going to outgrow it very soon. A pretty little collar. Again, they're going to outgrow it really quickly. You can choose. I thought this was pretty. This is just a nice little design. Just make sure that it has a good clip for the harness. When I'm in the house, I like to let my puppy drag a house line. So it doesn't have an end on, I just cut the loop off. It won't get caught on the furniture. So they drag the house line. If I need to stop my puppy quickly, I just um, step on the leash. When uh, they get a little older, I like to use a collar that is thicker. I think it's easier on the neck and I can attach the tags too. Also when they're older, I love the Roughwear flag line harness. I'll put a link below to the flag line harness. There's also a Roughwear Webmaster harness. Both of them are great harnesses, but they're expensive. And I would buy this when my puppy is not a baby puppy any longer and is almost full grown. 
one thing I like to have with my puppy, as far as leashes, is a training lead. I attach the training lead to the harness, and then my puppy can wander around outside. I know they can't run away, and I can practice come. So there's a little bit of a training tip. I really don't use this. This came with one of my dogs years ago. I'm just feel don't feel comfortable with these. Some people like them. I'm always afraid of getting the dog or me or somebody caught on that uh, cord. I don't use those. Potty training. What do you use? If your puppy hasn't had two vaccinations, you can't even take them outside to go potty. So you have a couple options. You can always take the paper disposable pads. I usually buy a hundred pack so that I have plenty for my puppy. Put them in the puppy pen. Now you can also use the washable pad. If you buy the washable pad, buy at least a pack of four or six because when the pad is soiled, it has to go in your washing machine to clean it and you'll have to have another one to put down. Now if you don't want to use potty pads, then you can, and here's a picture of the fresh patch, the real grass that you can have and you can put it on a balcony or put it outside uh, your door so your puppy can learn to go outside. When you're potty training your puppy, you're going to need something to clean up the spots. Nature's Miracle, spray it on, blot it, let it dry, spray it again, and the spot the odor is gone. Now, I found this not too long ago. This is the Carbona Oxy Powered Carpet Cleaner. Works great. And if a puppy throws up or pees or something, takes that stain out of the carpet. So I'm really pleased with it. Speaking of potty training, you're going to need your poop bags. These are earth rated. I like these. They also have biodegradable as well. These are really strong bags. If you have to pick up the poop, really easy to use. Just slip your hand in and pick it up because you know you now have a puppy, so you have to clean up after them. They're really cute bags that you can attach right to your leash. Cloth, pretty little cloth bag. I'll put a couple pictures there. Whatever you like for your uh, poop bag holder. Poochie Dells. Some people say these are the greatest thing in the world. They teach their puppy to ring the poochie bells every time they go out. And in no time, their puppy is going over and, and ringing the poochie bells. Let's talk about grooming. Shampoo. Now, your breeder may give you specific directions about what shampoo to use, home and brush your puppy with. But this is a nice one. It's Burt Bees Hypoallergenic. It's real gentle shampoo. It's good for puppies. I don't bathe my puppies very often. I'm more likely to take this Best Shot waterless shampoo, spray a little bit onto a cloth, and when you rub it on your puppy, it makes like a foam. And then you take another cloth and dry them. So this is a waterless shampoo. And if my puppy's a little soiled or their feet are dirty, I'm more likely to use that. What do I use for grooming? If you have a really short haired dog. You want to just go over them. This is a Zoom Groom and you can go over them with the Zoom Groom. Now, when you're doing anything with a brush or a comb, make sure you're feeding your puppy. Give them a treat as you're brushing to help them to like it. Right. For my dogs, for the Italian Greyhounds, this is a bristle brush and I like to just go over them with the bristle brush. That takes out the loose hair. This bristle brush won't work on a dog like Snoop. You see pictured here, he's a Caton de Tulier. Or Willie, Wilhelmina. She's a Cavapoo. So first you can use a pin brush. Now you can see the video, I'll put it above, of Kirby when I was teaching him that it was fun to be on the table to be groomed. I'll put that above. Use a pin brush. This is what's called a slicker. Now, the important thing about the slicker is that you don't have one that has really stiff, hard pins and no soft backing. See how this one goes down 
goes down easily when I push on it. That's what you want. You want something with a soft backing. The one you don't want to use is this one. Somebody brought this to class one day and I said, no, you don't want that. And I kept it just for demo. It's hard. See how hard it is? And it's going to give my fingers an indent. You don't want that for your puppy. You want the soft one. So when you push on it, it goes down easily. There are different brands. I'm not even sure what this is. It's so old, but I love it. Now you have the slicker and you have the pin brush. After you have brushed your dog, then you take the comb and you comb it. If you have any long haired dog, you need this type of equipment. Next, nail clippers. When you're buying nail clippers, always make sure that you buy the one with the guard. Don't buy the one that just has the guillotine. Leave these to the groomers. The one with the guard at least will not let you put your puppy's toenail in any deeper than the guard. If you are going to cut your puppy's nails, make sure you have quick stop. This is just a tiny little yellow powder, but if for some reason you hit a blood vessel, you have to have the quick stop to stop the bleeding. Like I said, sometimes trimming nails is left best to the professionals. Teeth. Now if you have an Italian Greyhound, this is essential. The best toothbrush to use I have found is a toddler's toothbrush. None of the dog toothbrushes was soft enough. This one is so soft. I just bought it at CVS. It's a toddler's toothbrush, has a toothpaste with it. Don't use the toothpaste. Don't ever use human toothpaste for your puppy. Only the toothbrush. Now, the toothpaste I use is Pet Smile. That is approved by the VOHC, the Veterinary Oral Health Council. It's the only one approved. And boy, have I seen a difference in my dog since I've been using this toothpaste for the last five months, maybe? Big difference. Whiter teeth, no tartar collecting. Great. I brush my dog's teeth every day. I know if you have a Labrador Retriever puppy, you don't need to brush them every day. If you have an Italian Greyhound puppy, you do. Anybody who has a puppy, though, needs to get your puppy used to having you put your fingers in their mouth. Take your finger, put a little bit of toothpaste on. So I would take the little bit of toothpaste and then just rub it over their mouth. Get them used to it now. So if you do have to work with your puppy brushing their teeth, they like it. Now we've talked about almost all the grooming except for a pet nail grinder. This is a Casfoy, and I'll put a link below to the grinder. I like it. It's so quiet. You can't even hardly hear it. It's got a light. I did an entire video on the Casfoy pet nail grinder. If you'd like to see it, I'll put the card above. And I love the light. You can see the nail. And then when you don't need these little guards where you can put the nail in, you can take the guard off and then you have a regular grinder with the light. My dogs are doing great with it. So that completes the grooming essentials. We also, of course, need a bowl. I like a food bowl that's not deep. Also, stainless steel. I don't ever use plastic, stainless steel, or ceramic. And a little water bowl. I keep the water up on the counter and give my puppy water every time before they go outside. In addition to the water bowl that I keep on the counter, I have the one that clips on to the side of the puppy pen. Metal, bowl goes in, I can put a little bit of water in it if I want to give my puppy water in the puppy pen, then they can't spill it. I also have a little collapsible water bowl that is so easy, goes right with us, and if we're out somewhere, I always take my little thermos and I can give my puppy water. Dog food, I'm gonna leave that up to you. As far as your breeder will send you home with some dog food, then you make the choice if you're going to stay with that dog food or if you're going to switch to something else. If you are going to switch, do it slowly. Take at least a week, 10 days of changing over to the new dog food. Well, that's it. That's my list that I tell people are essential for a new puppy. 
Thank you. Please remember, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. Bye from Joyce at Diamond Dog Training. Bye-bye.